Okay, so next we're going to do wellness. Find out how your DNA may affect your body's responses to diet, exercise, and sleep. We already did the sleep, so we're going to do the other things. So we're going to okay. so what do we have? Mm, this is really interesting. Okay, so caffeine consumption. That's something I would like to read. Likely to consume less. Interesting. Based on your genetics, you are likely to drink slightly less caffeine than average. If you drink caffeine at all, 23andMe research participants with their genetic result will consume caffeine regularly tend to drink the equivalent about eight cup about an eighth of a cup of coffee per day. Of course, not everyone chooses to consume ca caffeine, but these, but those who do, their genetics may play in the amount they consume. Interesting. If you consume caffeine, current guidelines recommend that a healthy adult drinks no more than um, about three. 12 ounces cup of coffee and 8 ounces of tea per day. And since caffeine hangs around your system for several hours, consider avoiding caffeine starting mid-afternoon or, or even earlier if you want a good night's sleep. Hmm, that's a, that's a really interesting one actually. I just love this website because it really gives you a full detail. This is just, um, you know, the overview, but then when you go to the scientific details, it's really cool. It's even saying caffeine consumption, metabolism are influenced by the genetic marker near the C1P1A2 and the and H, um, sorry, AHR gene. So this contains instructions for enzymes that breaks down any substance including caffeine, the enzyme is a member of the large family of enzymes called, I don't even Anyways, know, uh, let's go back to wellness. I'm not going to do all of them. I'm just going to do the very important ones. Oh, this is actually, um, oh, actually genetic weight, disposition to weigh less than average. Let's read this one. So, your genes influence not just your weight, but also the impact of different health, healthy habits. Your genes dispose your weight about 4% four, about 4 less than average. This doesn't mean that you're definitely weigh less than the average. Keep in mind that your lifestyle and environment has a big impact on your weight. Reading some of it. This is, after all, um, very personal information. Okay, so likely intolerant. Oh! That's really interesting. I'm lactose intolerant. Likely intolerant. Okay, I gotta read this. So, almost everyone is born with the ability to digest dairy products but most people lose the ability as they age becoming lactose intolerant based on your genetics you're likely to be lactose intolerant that's weird huh you know just explain when i have too much um how should i say this too much lactose my stomach does get upset but i, I didn't think this would be hmm this is interesting and the weird thing is I love cheese however not everyone with the results expected the symptoms of lactose intolerance there are many genetic environment factors that we don't that we don't test that can allow people to digest dairy products people who experience indigestion after consuming dairy products can avoid symptoms by limiting how much dairy they eat and drink in one sitting. If you choose to limit dairy in your diet, 
the NIH recommends re uh, replacing those foods with equivalent sources of calcium, vitamin D, and other nutrients. Nutrients, I mean. Always speak with a healthcare, a healthcare professional before making major dietary and lifestyle changes. Okay, so we, this is pretty interesting. I mean, I wasn't expecting most of this. Oh, here's one. Saturated fat and weight. So likely similar weight. Let's see what that means. So genetic factors help explain why people's weight more than others when, they're, when their diets are high in saturated fats. Your weight is likely to be similar on a diet high or low in saturated fats than the same number of cal total calories. People with your genetic results tend to have a, BMI, a similar BMI on the diet, which is greater than or, or less than 22 grams of saturated fats per day. As long as they consume the same number of total calories, however, diets diets high in saturated fats have been associated with increased LDL bad cholesterol which is a risk factor for heart disease limit your saturated fat intake and may if it may have a large it may not have a large effect on your weight but if you're if it's important for reducing your risk of a heart disease, samples of foods and high saturated fats, 19 grams saturated fats and eight ounce steak, five grams uh, saturated in a, a slice of pizza of 14, uh, the, sli the slice of a 14 piece pizza. 9 grams of saturated per cup of ice cream. Oh, this is really interesting. Like, this really explains everything. Like I said, I'm really enjoying this, and I feel like this is, this is good. I mean, I mean, I'm kind of surprised on this one. Really surprised. Wasn't surprised on this. I was really surprised on this. This one, too. This one, not so much. I mean, kind of, and this I don't, it's not relevant. Okay, so let's move on to the last part of this 